in this case study, uh, I am going to be working with two files of data. Uh, one file of data called snpdata.csv contains a list of locations in the genome of the malaria parasite, p falciparum. And the other file, popdata.csv, uh, contains or should contain the same list of genome locations and some more data as well. Um, and the, the point is that snpdata.csv contains the canonical list, the canonical data. So uh, whatever is in popdata.csv uh, should be consistent with snpdata. And what I'd like to do is to use the petal package uh, to verify this. So I uh, have Python installed on my system, uh, Python version 2.7. Uh, I also have uh, installed uh, Petal from the Python package index. Uh, that's already there. Uh, so let's start the Python interpreter up and import uh, all of the Petal functions. Okay, so um, just to save ourselves some typing, let's let A be uh, the snip data file. I happen to know that this is actually a tab delimited file, so I have to specify this because the default is comma. And let's let B be the pop data for CSV file. So A is the canonical data, A comes first, and B is the data that we want to compare to A. So let's have a look at the headers of these two files. Um, so the header for table A has 10 fields. CHR stands for chromosome name. POS stands for the coordinate position within a chromosome. So these two fields, chromosome and position, together uh, from a compound key, they uniquely identify a genome location. Let's have a look at the header for table B. Table B has a lot more fields, um, but the, the key point is that these two tables should have nine fields in common, actually, but it's a bit hard to see at the moment because different field names have been used in table B, so we've got chromosome here instead of CHR and coordinates instead of POS. So uh, one of the first things I'm going to do is to rename the fields in table B uh, just so that it's it's obvious uh, which fields are in common. So I'm first going to define a dictionary um, mapping field names in B to field names in A. So the chromosome goes to CHR, coordinates goes to POS, uh, ref allele goes to ref non-ref allele goes to nref what else have we got uh, derived allele goes to dr uh, and then uh, mutation type goes to mute and then we've got some gene fields. So we've got uh, gene goes to gene ID, gene aliases goes to gene alias, and gene description goes to gene descriptor. Okay, so now let's use our dictionary to rename B. So let's use the rename function from Petal. Rename B using our dictionary of uh, name mappings. <clears throat> so if we look at the header for B renamed, uh, we should see that uh, those fields have been uh, renamed. So now that I've uh, renamed the fields that I'm interested in, um, I'm actually only interested in uh, in this set of nine fields in both tables. So I'm going to use the... Well, what I want to do is just select out those fields uh, of data from both tables um, and start comparing those fields only. So I'm going to use the cut function to select out those common fields. So let's first of all define the common fields. 
common fields are chr, pause, ref, and ref, dunno, mute, gene id, gene alias, gene disker. Now let's uh, cut a. So let's say that let a common equal a cut of a using the common fields. And let's let b common equal a cut of b renamed, again using the common fields. So if we um, now take a look at the headers from these two. We see that they now have exactly the same headers. So the same fields of data have been selected. And we can take a look at the data now. So let's look at A common. Uh, and so there we have some of the data. Uh, so there's chromosome names, MAL1, there's positions, uh, and a bit more data. If we take a look at B, um, we can see that it contains pretty much the same data, or you, at a glance you can notice a couple of differences. Um, there's a difference, for example, in the encoding of this mutation type field. So in the in B it's encoded as sin or non, whereas in A it's either an S or, or an N. And there's also a difference in the gene description field. So here gene descriptions are like that, and here gene descriptions are uh, different. So just at a glance there's obviously some differences between these these two tables and what we'd like to do is investigate that further and find out exactly what the differences are. So before we can uh, completely compare um, these two tables of data uh, we need to make sure that the representations of the data are appropriate for comparison. Um, and there's a couple of things I'd like to do. So first of all I'd like to convert this position field uh, to an integer. You see it's come out as a string. All data extracted from a CSV starts out as a string and you have to specify how you want it to be interpreted, in this case as an integer. And also the encoding, uh, the representation of the mutation type field here is different. Like I said, we've got SYN here instead of S here. and I'll, So we should normalize that, make that the same uh, before we can do the comparison. So let's um, do the conversion that we want to do on A. So let's uh, use a convert function on common field in A, and let's convert the pause field using the built-in Python int function. Uh, so if we take a look at A conv, uh, you'll see now that the pause field uh, is integers instead of strings. And for B, we're going to do the same, but we're going to do a second conversion step. So let's let B conv uh, 1 equal convert of B common such that the pause field gets transformed, converted to an integer. Let's let b conv step 2 be a conversion of b conv 1, such that the mutation type field gets translated by a dictionary that says turn sin into an s and turn non into uh, an n. And just for symmetry, let's let b conv equal b conv 2. So if we look at b conv, you can see now that uh, the position field has been converted to an integer and the mutation field has been uh, translated from sin and non to s and n. So um, now the representations of our data uh, are the same and we can begin comparing the two tables. Um, so one simple thing we can do to compare the two tables is to just count the number of rows in the two tables. So as I said, uh, each table should contain the same list of genome locations. So uh, let's do a row count. So uh, we can see at a glance that there are some fields missing for, or some rows. There's less rows in table B, uh, 29 in fact. Um, so that's uh, something that we'd like to 
um, investigate a little bit further. So um, to get to the bottom of this, let us um, try and figure out exactly what the differences are. So firstly, let's just focus on the, the, the genome locations. Let's focus on the, the chromosome and the position fields. So let's use cut again to just um, select these two fields. So let's select A locks for locations equal a cut of A converted um, such that we are interested in the CHR and POS fields only. And let's let B locks equal something very similar. And so let's now ask what locations are only in table A. And we can use the petal complement function, uh, passing in A locks and B locks. Uh, so let's do a row count of this new table. Complement here means uh, something very similar to a set complement, so uh, a subtraction. So what this is saying is that um, there are 29 genome locations that are present only in table A. Um, and we can have a look at that. And so um, there's the first 10, there's 29, there's 29 in total. Uh, and just so that we um, save this list uh, for later reference, let's let's save this to a CSV file. So let's call to CSV, uh, passing in locks Lee in A, um, and let's save that out to a file called missing locations.csv. Uh, again, using uh, a tab delimited format because that's what uh, my colleagues like. Um, So that's safe for reference. Uh, just for completeness, uh, let's see if there are any locations only in B. So that is the complement of B locks, A locks. And just do a row count. It should be zero uh, because we know there were 29 missing rows, and so it's zero. So there's no unexpected um, locations in the in table B. Um, just for interest, we could have also, as a shortcut, used the diff function. So we could have said locks only in B, locks only in A equals the diff of A locks B locks. And that would have given us the same result. Um, we could also have avoided the cut stage um, by using the anti-join function. So we could have said that locks only in A equals the anti-join of table A, all of the fields, um, on table B, uh, where the key here equals uh, the CHR, it's a compound key, pos fields. And that should give us the same, exactly the same, result. And if we look at that, this time all of the fields have come through because we didn't do an initial cut, um, but it's the same list. Okay, um, so we've established that there are some missing rows in table B, missing genome locations. Um, Putting that to one side, let's explore the rows, the locations that they do have in common, and uh, try and find any conflicts in the in the actual data that is reported on the on the common locations. Uh, so to do this, we're going to use the petal conflicts function. Um, but before we can do that, we have to concatenate the two tables. We have to uh, stack both tables up into one big long table. Um, so I'm going to say let A B equals a concatenation cat of a conv b conv 
uh, and um, if I give you a row count on that, that should be the sum of the row counts of the two tables uh, that we started out with. Uh, and if I look at that, you'll only see the data from table A, if I look at the first 10 rows. Um, but what I can do uh, to make it a little bit more obvious what's happened is I can now sort this concatenated table using the petal sort function. So let's sort AB uh, using the compound key chromosome position. Uh, what have I done wrong there? Oh, I forgot a quote. Okay. So if we look at AB sort, and this will take a moment while it does the sort. What you can see now is that actually for each chromosome position, MAL 191099, we actually have two rows, MAL 191104. So what we're seeing here uh, are data from both of the tables um, concatenated into a single table, then sorted so that you see a row from table A followed by a row from table B, a row from table A followed by a row from table B. And the conflicts function is going to use these key values and then look at the other fields that are present and see if there are any, any conflicts. And just at a quick glance here, you can see that the gene alias field here, um, there's some conflict between the values reported uh, from the two tables. So this is what the conflicts function, function is going to go through and discover for us. Um, so rather than focusing on one field at a time, let's just ask, are there any conflicts in the data? Um, so let's let a b conflicts equal, um, so we use the conflicts function from petal, um, a b, I'm going to pass an a b sorted here, um, oops I called it a b sort didn't I, uh, and we have to provide the key value so that we know what we should be comparing, uh, and um, this is a, just a slight um, performance note, um, but normally uh, the conflicts function as part of its algorithm for, for finding conflicts would sort um, the data behind the scenes, uh, but because we've already sorted the data um, we can tell conflicts that it's already sorted and doesn't need to do that work again, so we're going to say pre-sorted equals true. That basically just should make uh, performance a little bit better. So let's just do a row count on AB complex. So it looks like 185,000 rows are present in um, the conflicts table. So um, there's quite a few conflicts in this table and we need to um, narrow this down a little bit. So um, let us uh, take this one field at a time. So let's take the, the ref field first and let's see if we can find any conflicts there. So uh, one way we can do this would be to just cut um, that field. So let's say AB ref equals a cut on AB. Let's use the sorted data. Uh, we want to take the key fields and we're also interested in the ref fields. Uh, so let's have a look at that. Um, okay, uh, so now let's use the conflicts function. So let's say AB refs conflicts equal conflicts of AB ref where the key is a compound key of chromosome and position. And let's do a row count. No, that's good. No conflicts in that field. Um, so let's just have a quick look back at all of the fields we're looking at. So uh, I'm going to skip ahead 
to uh, the mute field. Um, so let's let's have a look at that one. So let's let a b mute equal a cut on a b. Again, I'll use the sorted data. Uh, picking out the key fields that I'm interested in, as well as the one that I want to find conflicts in. And then we'll say AB mute conflicts equal conflicts AB mute and a key equals CHR pause. Oops, uh, what have I done? Ah, yes, that needs to be a tuple. So let's do a row count on AB mute conflicts. So there's 3,592 uh, conflicts. So let's have a quick look. So you can see, for example, at this position in table A, it's reported as a dash, which means um, it's unknown. Whereas here it's reported as n, meaning it's non-synonymous. Here we've got a dash versus an n. At uh, this position, we've got a, uh, an outright disagreement. This says n, this says s. Again here, this says n, this says s. So obviously we have some discrepancies here that we need to deal with. And again, let's just save that uh, data out to a CSV file. Maybe mute conflicts. Um, let's save that to a file called mute conflicts.csv. Again, using a delimiter uh, of a tab. Okay, um, so again, let's look back at uh, our data. Um, now, uh, We'd like to explore conflicts in our gene, various gene-related fields. Um, we'll do that in a slightly different way. Uh, so what I can do here is first let's just select these, um, use cut to just fish out the gene-related fields. Okay, uh, and now um, if we look, for example, at the gene ID field, uh, we can say that A, B, gene ID conflicts equals uh, conflicts on A, B, gene where the key is the compound key of chromosome and position. Uh, and this time I just want to look at the gene ID fields, but I want to leave the other fields in the in the table, but I don't want to uh, examine those for conflicts at this point. So I'm just going to say include equals gene ID. And what that says to the conflicts function is only look at that field to, to um, look for conflicts and ignore the other non-key fields. So if we do a row count on AB gene ID conflicts, you see there's 5,000 conflicts. Uh, if we have a quick look at that. We see that at various positions, actually, a completely different uh, gene has been reported. Um, and we could do something very similar for the gene alias field. Um, so we could say gene alias conflicts equals conflicts, uh, where we're just including the gene alias field in our examination. We would do a row count on that.
So there's 39,000 of those. So there's obviously something slightly different going on in the gene alias field than there is in the, in the gene ID field. And if we take a look at So it looks like sometimes we are just missing off some additional um, values uh, in some of the fields. So there's a slightly different problem going on, on in that field. And again, we could uh, save both of those conflicts tables out um, for future reference. Uh, so that's the end of the case study. Um, and uh, if you would like further information about Petal, then uh, you can go to packages.python.org slash petal, um, select the latest version. The latest version uh, should be 0.8 by now. Uh, and um, there's the documentation for uh, the package.